Well, Adam, it's not just information theory. So information theory misses a critical aspect of consciousness. Consciousness is, there's no observer observing me. I don't need to be, I don't need to have you watch me to be conscious. I don't need my parents or anybody else to watch me to have conscious experience. I don't need God to, for me to have conscious experiences. Now, information theory, Shannon information, upon which most of our modern civilization is based, is about sending information from a sender through a channel to a receiver. Consciousness isn't about sending anything to anybody. Now, there is a theory, the most popular theory of consciousness, it's a quantitative mathematical formal theory of consciousness, is called Integrated Information Theory, IIT. But the information in the Integrated Information Theory does not refer to Shannon information, it refers to information in the original sense of the world, informare, to give form to to give form to. It gives form to a high-dimensional structure. That's, that's the word it is. It's, it, it's confusing, I admit, because most everybody hears it and says, oh, that's Shannon information. It's not. So it's a theory that pro proceeds from, from phenomenology to, as it were, mechanisms in physics. It's, it states consciousness exists, it is specific, it is particular, it's one and it's only one. So it has certain axioms about that any any conscious experience has to obey, and from the so it proceeds. It starts with consciousness as a starting point. It says, "Well, there are these five axioms that any conscious property has. It exists. It has many parts. It is specific. It is one. It is only one." Then it says, "Well, what are the associated? It makes some postulate. What are the associated properties that a mechanism has to have in order to obey those five properties?" And then finally, it comes to an identity relationship where it says a physical mechanism with, a, let's say, a brain like this, with some neurons on and some neurons off, or brain like yours, or maybe even computer with some silicon gates on and other transistors off, in a particular state, has conscious experiences. What it means, it gives rise to this high-dimensional mathematical structure. And con that is what consciousness is. It's an identity theory. It doesn't say, well, this relates to consciousness. It says, this is what, so what consciousness is. Ultimately, a, a mathematical structure in a very high dimensional space. Now, I know this all sounds weird and strange, but you know, many other theories, theories of evolution, theory of quantum mechanics early on sound very strange. What's important here is that it, it's quantitative. You can predict certain things about which systems are and are not conscious. You can measure it. The theory gives you a number called phi that, that measure that can either be zero, which says the system doesn't exist, it doesn't feel like anything to itself, or it can be a positive number, unbounded in principle, that says how conscious, how conscious the system is. Technically, how much intrinsic cause effect power it has. The theory finally says ultimately, conscious is causal power of a system upon itself. That is at the most fundamental level what consciousness is. So it relates to a theory of ontology, to what exists, the study of what exists. In general, what ex I know something exists if I can exert a causal influence on it or if that thing can exert an causal influence on me. I know the moon exists because it has gravitational attraction and there's tides. I, I also see through the light the moon also influences me and I influence the moon to a tiny, tiny bit. That's external cause effect power. Consciousness is, so the theory says, is, is causal power I have upon my own fate. If I have a mechanism like my brain in a particular state, how much can this brain be affected by its immediate past? And how much does the current state affect its immediate future? And the more a system can affect itself, the more it is conscious, the more it exists. That is what consciousness is. We live in a universe where physics is such that you have an, that every physical system has an external aspect that we study using physics and chemistry and biology. We can poke it and, and put it in a scanner and talk to it, etc. That's all behavior. But then it also has an internal aspect, what it feels like to be that system. That is what consciousness is.